And the second item I have, you notice in the bulletin, my sister-in-law Barbara's kidney needs to be removed. That surgery will occur on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. So we'd ask for prayers for Barbara that guide the surgeon's hands and that the sur surgery goes well. Are there any other? Uh, Pastor Mark has some sharing. Hi, this is Chris Trenton. Along the lines of disaster relief, I just wanted to put a plug in for the disaster relief auction coming up on the, I believe it's the 22nd and 23rd of this month. Um, both Art and I have been to Louisiana with the youth uh, doing relief for Katrina and also in Tennessee for flood victims in the past. And um, it's an excellent organization. They do a lot of good things. They come in after the first responders and stay for the long haul uh, to help those people who you know, just couldn't get it together and get things done um, right afterwards. And a lot of it is also listening to them and their stories and, and just encouraging them and lifting them up besides a little sweat and um, hard work. So if you are looking for a, an avenue to support or help folks and can't do it directly, I would really suggest you go to the disaster relief auction, bring your money, spend it. It goes to a very, very good cause. Um, just to piggyback on that, um, Sam and I received an email this week, and some others maybe, from the district about uh, a surge in, in providing uh, cleanup buckets. Uh, so we're going to talk about that with our leadership and maybe provide uh, more information for you next week and as a congregation for us to put together some, some cleanup buckets um, and materials to go help um, those that need it in, in Texas and also in, in Florida. So um, just keep your eyes and ears open for, for that uh, information. I just want to share briefly, uh, pray for Liz Beatty. Um, she has bronchitis, very bad, uh, coughing, and uh, so we're... We just uplift her for healing and pray that, that Bob does not get that or anyone else in the house. And also just a praise from Brad High says they do have the transportation needed for the youth event on Saturday. They're leaving at 8 a.m. Saturday morning and won't be back. Actually, yeah, that's right. Won't be back until probably uh, 1 or 2 a.m. Sunday morning. So we may not see Brad or Heather and some of the youth next Sunday morning. Uh, but we want to pray that, uh, that the festival they're going to is just, uh, it's uplifting to them. Um, so it's the Uprise Festival in Shippensburg. So it's good to be here. I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm excited to worship uh, with you. Uh, there's one more that you just need to know about too, a special prayer request. It's Joanne uh, Warfel. Uh, she's been struggling uh, since she had the surgery um, uh, on her intestine. They removed part of it and Although uh, Carol says her vitals were good and she was beginning to talk and even eat some things uh, before the last procedure, something was, as I told you last week, something's just not quite right. The body and the drains are producing too much fluid from her body and they found that there still is a hole in her small intestines. Uh, they went in to try to work on that, um, uh, it would have been Saturday, and they realized that they could not do it. The, the intestines are not in good enough shape to do that work. Um, so... What we're praying for is increased blood flow to that area and asking for the body to begin to heal uh, the intestines so that they can do the surgery to repair the hole. All right? So the good news is her vitals are good. She's looking good. She's beginning to converse. She's in pain today because of the surgery, but she's not out of the woods yet. All right? So, and Carol, I, I just hear fatigue in Carol's voice as she goes up on this roller coaster ride. Anyone else want to add to that? I know that Nancy and some others have heard from Carol, but. I think I've summed it up pretty good uh, with that. So, Carol and Danny need our support. And uh, just if you can feel to send a, a card to Reading Hospital uh, for Joanne Werfel, uh, that would be a great encouragement for her. So, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. <clears throat> Hi, I'm John. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add my prayer request to, to Sam's request. My sister lives in Clearwater, Florida, uh, and about a block and a half, two blocks up the, from her house is, she thought it was a safer house. Her daughter has a, a, a hurricane-proof, supposedly, construction in her house, and uh, because it's two or three feet up the hill, she thought she might have a little advantage there, but she said, I'm 94, and I believe in God's providence, and I'm okay with whatever happens. 
It'll be about midnight tonight when the hurricane goes through clear water. So we're all thinking and praying for the same uh, outcome. But they're, they're, they're okay with, with whatever comes because they're all Christians. Thank you. Thank you, John. Are there any other? Is there any other sharing this morning? If not, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, every day, if we look for it, we can see the glory of your creation. Through this worship service today, help us to feel your Holy Spirit moving in, around, and through us so that we can all be your true servants in whatever we do in this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 147, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, for it's good to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is seemly. So let's all rise and turn in our red hymnals to hymn number 99. This is my Father's world. Please turn to hymn number 225, Move in Our Midst.
Bible seat. I'd like to call on Pastor Mark at this time to lead us in the teacher consecration. Yes, thanks, brother. It's a joy for me to be able to walk through on Sunday mornings and see the small groups in action throughout the buildings. After the first service and the fellowship time, I, I routinely uh, walk through and I see what's happening. And I praise God that we're gathering to support each other, but also to teach all ages. And, and the desire for those that come to those groups indicates that they want to know more about God and they appreciate being together. So we're, we're celebrating our Sunday school uh, ministry today, but also we're asking uh, and, and recognizing that that doesn't happen without people that volunteer and give time and effort to do that. And because we feel that is um, so significant, we want to we recognize them uh, and allow them uh, to participate in the recognition of the teaching of God's Word uh, to all ages by making vows before God. So if you are a Sunday school teacher of any age, uh, if you are involved in Pioneer Club teaching or the junior church teaching, will you please join me in the front um, up here? Please come. I'll stand this way if you want to stand that way, so they can see your lovely faces. Great. So I always encouraged um, by this text in Ephesians, as I reflect upon my role as pastor, um, Ephesians 4 says this, but to each one of us, Grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. It was he, it was Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. So we're linked together in this, pastors and teachers, teachers and pastors, closely linked. That's a little scary, isn't it? All right. Listen, for this purpose, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's our job description, to build up the church, to strive for, for unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God we're trying to develop maturity in all ages of, of those who attend our classes to the glory of God. So I thank God for his grace that he's poured into your life to enable you to do this. Uh, there's nothing inherently that we do, um, but he's given us gifts that we can use uh, for his glory. And, and you've said yes to that. So I'm grateful for you. Without you, we couldn't do what we're trying to do and build up the body. Okay. So thank you, and uh, an opportunity for you to say thank you. Are you grateful for the teachers? Yeah? Thank you. I am too. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to, to, to do anything that brings God glory. Um, so I know that you didn't spend time, you invest hours, you study, you prepare, you look into the Word, you prepare the lesson and things that support to teach the plan, uh, and that's, uh, that is a lofty goal. So I hope that this year starting now uh, through, through the calendar year, that you see God at work in your students. Maybe, maybe you see God at work by bringing new students to your class, building them. We have room in our classrooms for more. Um, and that you also see growth in yourself as you encounter God's Word a new way. Um, it's important that we, that we teach and we stay aligned with God's Word and encourage our teacher. So I sent you some vows to look over. Do you receive those vows and you, and you thought about them, I hope? I'm going to give you the chance just to respond now in the presence of God to those vows. Teachers, will you endeavor with God's help to seek guidance and power from the Holy Spirit to teach and model biblical truth in accordance to our beliefs and practices and to faithfully fulfill all the duties to which you are called? 
And teachers, will you diligently seek to bring all those persons entrusted to your care to a growing faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and to a growing obedience to him? And teachers, will you pray for those students entrusted to you and seek to demonstrate the love of Jesus in your relationships with them? Thank you. That can make a huge difference. If a student from yours 10 years from now and come back and says, I'm so grateful that you were my teacher, and I remember what you taught me and what you did. Um, we don't always hear that. You, you know, you could teach for 30 years or 40 years and maybe not hear that more than a handful of times, but you, you are influencers. You're impacting the kingdom. So thankful. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for the chance to teach. You've given us your word. You've given us a specific revelation to who you are and what you want us to do and how you've moved through the world. And Lord, we pray that you would work mightily through these men and women as they uh, strive to build up your kingdom, O oh God. I believe we're praying in your will, Lord, that they, the, to use your word to train up children, to influence adults, to follow after Jesus. So Lord, we just look forward to your spirit bearing fruit through this ministry. We commit it to you. I commit each of them to you, Lord. We pray for uh, safekeeping. We pray for a steadfast mind when the enemy tries to distract. We pray for, um, we pray for uh, renewing of their faith as they encounter the stories of the Bible, that their knowledge and their, and their faith would grow, Lord, as you work and do this what you're about to do through them in this coming year. We're grateful, Lord. We pray that you would bring children and adults to these classes so that they might be a part of your work here in this place. We pray this through Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you all. May God bless you as you teach for his glory. <clears throat>
you really wouldn't go to either of these sources to, to kind of pull out God's wisdom. Maybe this would reveal some of that to you, but the Bible is the source for us for God's wisdom. But you can see God and his handiwork around us. As Sam said, if we open our eyes, we can see his handiwork in all creation, right? Uh, I want you to listen to some of the active things that we can do to pursue God's wisdom as we go about today, right? And who knows, maybe even as you study some of God's animals, it might help you in an animal trivia game later in your life. But God's wisdom will help you through the ups and downs and give explanations to what's going on around you, no matter what happens. Okay? Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for these two young women. Lord, I just pray that you would um, continue to open their minds to who you are. Teach them, Lord. I know they're faithful attenders to Sunday school and to uh, midweek uh, things that we offer for our children here. Lord, we just, uh, we just pray uh, that you we continue to teach them. Expand what they know. Help them, Lord, as they, as they make decisions and, and live out their days uh, as students right now and in their homes. Help them, Lord, to see and understand and have insight um, because you're involved in so many details, God. So we thank you for them. Thank you for the chance, Lord, to pursue you this morning. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You want to take any home to play today? You can. You can check them out afterwards if you want. So they're here. Thanks, girls. Will you join me in your Bibles, uh, turning to the book of Proverbs uh, for the text this morning, uh, and our chance to pray over the text and the names that we listed. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Our Heavenly Father, we give you praise for the glory of this day. In the place that we live, it is safe. It's a beautiful morning. But you, God, you're the God of the morning in Pennsylvania as you are the God of the morning in Florida and in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and around the world. So God, you see everything that's happening. We've chosen to come and to gather to worship you, and we thank you for you are a great and awesome God. We thank you for the chance to pursue you, and to know you. We thank you for the chance to sing songs, declaring that this is the Father's world, and to ask for you to move among us in new ways as your spirit joins us and unites us, we declare that we come in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, the chosen one before the creation of the world, the one who would come and provide for us. So we lift up the name of Jesus as our Lord and Savior and ask that in your great intercession for us, Jesus, that we might come into the holiness of the Father. Lord, if there's anything hindering anybody this morning from seeking you in our thoughts and our hearts, seeking you that we might worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, we pray that you would remove it. We pray that this would be holy and sacred ground because you are here. We ask for your blessing upon the reading of your word, that you would bear fruit through it, transform us into your likeness, helping us to follow Jesus as his disciples. Lord, we pray for those in the path of this hurricane. Lord, as Sam and I were praying earlier, we pray for lives to be preserved. We pray for wisdom for those who, uh, who think that they can stand against the winds that you'll push through this area, that those who are safe from the rising waters, Lord, we pray for people to, to seek and to be wise and seek safe shelter as much as possible. And in this opportunity to slow down and to move from normal routines, that we would examine our routines. Lord, uh, when the hurricane stops everything and people get hunkered in someplace, they would think about life, the beauty of life. 
the fragility of life. And Lord, my prayer is that we would look to you. I was reminded from a psalm from a brother uh, just a few weeks ago, Father, that, that you are Lord over the floodwaters. When you created your spirit hung over the waters of the earth. So God, we pray that, that you would be also moving and acting not only in Florida, but around the world as the acts of nature disrupt our routines, whether it be floods, hurricanes, wildfires, in this country or in Nigeria, or Ethiopia, around the world, Lord, we pray that we would turn to you and that in our choice of turning to you this morning, Father, even though our weather is glorious, we know that you will meet us here as well. Thank you, Lord. We pray. We pray over Joanne, Lord. We pray that you'd bring healing to her, that it amazes the doctors and staff, Lord, continue to, to build her back to health. We pray for this. We pray for her intestines, her small intestines, Lord. We pray that they would become stronger through blood flow that's there. We pray, Lord, even that, that this hole that's there would be healed, Father, for the glory of your name and for the testimony of Joanne that you are our healer. We uplift her. We pray for nursery school starting tomorrow, Father. We pray that, that it would be a great start for a year for, uh, for Kristen and Sharon and the children that come, Lord. We pray that you would teach them many things about you and open their minds to learn. We pray for nervous little ones as they come and the transition from parents that it would go as well as possible. We thank you for our teachers, Lord. And, and Father, you know that there are so many others that are involved to make ministry happen. We only called for the teachers this morning, but we know that there are helpers. We know that there are snack providers. We know that there are game leaders. We know that there are directors, Father, um, we don't want to minimize anyone's role. We just pray, Father, that all of us working together as a team and a unit would um, represent you well. We're grateful that we have youth to go for the festival. We pray for a safe trip and that they would uh, be encouraged in their faith and they would be drawn to faith. We pray for healing over Liz, Lord, that you would uh, remove... Um, the inflammation uh, in, from her lungs and bring her to health and keep Bob healthy through this process as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you are alive and well and that we can know you. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, oh God, and bringing us together this morning to worship you. Continue to move in our midst, O oh Spirit of God that we might become more like you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to think this morning about pursuing things in your life. And what makes you do that? What do you pursue? Why do you do that? What makes you stop at a certain restaurant to say, let's eat there? You know, is, it, is it the food that they offer or... Uh, the number of cars that are in the parking lot, the price for the meals. Why do you pursue certain things? Um, why do you pursue what you watch on television? Some of you are excited that there's football beginning to be played and you can't wait to get back and watch your favorite team. Others could say, I could care less about that. I want to pursue something else. What drives your interests, your pursuits? What do you go after? What pursued those to live on an island in the, surrounded by great mounts of water. What pursued them to build there? And then after the last storm came through to rebuild and hope that they wouldn't get hit again. Why? Why do we make the decisions? And where, are, where is God's wisdom involved in our life in these decisions? I'm going to talk to you today about pursuing God's wisdom. I began to read this month um, devotional times out of the book of Proverbs, um, and I'm, as some of you have done before and um, others may be doing now, you read a Proverbs or a Psalms based upon the, the date of the calendar. So today would be my meditation upon uh, Proverbs chapter 10. But I read through Proverbs 2, which we're going to share as our text, and it led me to ask some 
challenging questions for my life about what I am pursuing. Where's, where is uh, my passion and desires directed for me in my life? And I'm going to share it with you this morning in one sense to encourage us uh, to think about Sunday school being a part and a mechanism for which we can join together to pursue the Lord and, and uplifting that, but also to reflect on individually and to think, am I actively pursuing God and His ways in my life? Or am I rather passive about it? Passive would means maybe you show up at places where, you know, there's religious things happening and you just kind of, maybe kind of glean stuff that, that comes your way. Maybe listen to the radio um, occasionally. Or you, are you actively seeking the Lord in His ways? So that, that gave me pause this week to think about my life, my routine, my actions, and what I'm doing, and the privilege and the honor that we have to do that. Uh, we have a God who has made himself available to us. And then thinking about wisdom, as it talks about it in the, in the book of Proverbs. So let's begin this morning by looking at Proverbs 2 and listening for the hypothetical statements which provide the points for us to consider today. The writer says this, My son, if you, if, if you accept my words... This is an if-then statement, right? The if is the hypothesis. This is the part, the condition, which has to come first before the conclusion. If, this is a part of our logic, our thinking, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and, he continues with the hypothesis, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and again, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure. I read that and I said, oh my goodness. Am I, is, that, is that describing my life? If someone would look at the life of Mark Moodler and they would say, oh man, that, you're doing that. Would they see that in my life? We'll get into those action words in just a minute. But the text says, if these things happen, and then, we, and then we came into the conclusion, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, which Proverbs says is what? Is the beginning of wisdom. Then you understand it. Then only happens after the if. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and you will find the knowledge of God. And verse 6 is a declaration of truth. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So the points of the sermon this morning are the pursuit, thinking about the pursuit, thinking about our, pass, our active lives and moving away from being passive in our faith, and then talking about the wisdom. The pursuit, what do we go after? What are the things that you're going after? What do you pursue? Right? This first phrase, I'm just going to look at the phrase that they, they gave us. First, accept my words. This is the plea of caring parents, isn't it right? Just listen to what I have to tell you. Please, just listen. I, I'm giving you good things to protect you, to pro provide guidelines in your life. Just listen to me, right? Every teacher of students wants their students to accept what I have to offer. In accepting what we have to offer, there's a trust factor, is there not? You don't trust the teacher. You don't trust that your parents know anything about driving, even though they've driven for 30 or 40 years. And you say, what do you know about driving on these back roads? Huh. Right? So, accepting the words from the authority. Accept the words. Accept the words of God. We just worked on this with the series that we talked about, the Word of God. We talked about the God's Word being useful for teaching and rebuking and training in righteousness so that the body may be built up. This is the first step for teachers and their students, is establishing trust and being knowledgeable about the content that you're trying to disperse. Accept my words. On the receiving end, there is an action here that is huge. 
much of the world, many of the world, do not accept God as the authority. And they will not accept his words as teaching. There are some even in the church who don't accept the words of God as an authority. Accept my words, the text says. The second action thing for us is to store up God's commands within us. Store up my commands. Sometimes I think my brain has a big, uh, the, the, the holes on my sieve in my, in my head, and my brain are it, too big. Things come out too easily, right? Things that I've read and, and looked over and read through, like, oh, I don't remember that. What do I remember? What do you remember about your parents' commands, right? What did your parents tell you to do? Store up my commands, right? Close the door. Don't let the cold air in. The air conditioning's on. Please shut the door. Right? Make sure you check your fuel levels before you go. What do you remember about the commands of your parents? What will my kids remember from me? Turn the lights out when you leave the room. Right? Dad told us that over and over again. Turn, store up my commands within you. Let me ask you this way. What commands? What comes to mind when I say, tell me the command of God that's nearest to your heart? Love one another. As I have loved you, Jesus says. A new command I give you. Love each other as I have loved you. Right? Some people said, honor your parents is a command of God. Right? If you can't think of any, think of the ones that Jesus summarized the New Testament with what to? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. And then he added a third one in there. It says, a new command I give you, love each other. What commands have we stored up within us in our pursuit of God? Psalm 119.11 says this. The psalmist declares, I've hidden your word in my heart. I've put it in there so I can recall it for a reason, that I may not sin against you. Store up my commands. I have to work harder. I have to work hard at this because if I don't recall it or use it, it tends to leave my mind. I don't know how you are or how you're doing. Some of you are younger than me. I think the younger you are, the easier it is to commit things to memory, right? The older I get, I think there's less capacity to do that. I don't know if I can pull out any scientific information to support that or not, but that's just my experience. I have to work harder at remembering and recalling. The more I use something, the more that I am familiar with it and can reuse it. It becomes a part of me. So reading the commands over and saying them or writing them puts them a part of it. This is an active part of pursuing God that we're suggested to do, to go after. Remember, we're going after God's wisdom and his knowledge. What else does he say? What other active things? It says, turn Turn your ear to wisdom. Turn your ear to wisdom. There's a lot of things you can listen to and watch. A lot. We have tons of options. There's a, if you have a, a, a television set in your home or a radio, right? you're already been listening with, there's hundreds or, or maybe even thousands of options for you to put in. CD players. We can take music with us. We can listen to it when we walk and exercise. What are you turning your ear to? This says, Turn your ear to wisdom. And then it says, apply your heart to understanding. Don't just listen. You got to think about it. Applying it to my heart means, what does that mean? How does it affect my life? Asking those kind of questions. Now, as I worked on this and I thought about this, I don't want this message to come across. If you simply read the Bible, if you simply go after God's commands and store them up and you can recite them, then your life will be golden. That's the answer. No. No. You're going to have troubles and strifes. You're going to have situations that come up that are hard and really leave you scratching your head and asking, God, what's going on? What are you doing? Well, there's room for this in our pursuit of God. Verse 3 says, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, it may not take away the trial, but it may give you the perception of and the answers to what you're looking for. This allows us to pray and to go after our relationship with God, saying, God, help me, I need you. Even as we sang, Spirit of God, move in my midst. 
move that I might know what's going on and I can walk through this. Scripture tells us in Isaiah that when you go through the fire that, and pass through the waters, I will not leave you. I will be there with you. Talking to, to Israel, he says, you are special. I created and formed you. I've redeemed you with men, God says to Israel. And we know that's true for us in Jesus Christ. So you're pursuing God also to cry out for insight and to cry aloud for understanding. I asked myself this week, is this me? Is this describing my life? And then the next two lines really kind of pressed into me and squeezed me when it says this, conditional. If you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. In the land of affluence, we don't pursue things like that so much, do we? We pretty much have all that we need. But what if there was silver in your backyard? You haven't discovered it yet. Would you hire an excavator? Would you begin to dig? There's hidden treasure on your property. Guaranteed. There is hidden treasure on your property. It's guaranteed. The hidden treasure is the wisdom of God. Will you search for it with all your heart and your mind? I'm like, am I searching God like it's hidden treasure? Am I going after it like this is the thing that's most valuable to me in my life? Listen to the words from Proverbs 3, 14 and 15. Just the next chapter, it says, Wisdom is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. That's spoken like someone who has discovered it and found it and wants his son and children to know that and to experience it. Search for it as hidden treasure. This is an active thing. This is not passive. I'm not passively finding great discoveries in my backyard. I'm not finding that buried treasure by sitting around. I'm going after it. I'm looking for it. I'm turning pages. I'm praying. I'm crying out for it. A fundamental part of pursuing wisdom is having the humility to exclaim this. Uh, what do I know of God's glory? What do I know of the mind of God? Even those of you that are older than me, with respect, I say, you've been hearing messages about God all your life, and from pastors who are more qualified than me to preach his word and bring it to you, Sunday schools and Bible studies forever. But we can't exhaust the knowledge of God that's available. You won't reach the end. You keep pursuing and hungering and learning and seeing how it plays out in your life. Proverbs 3.19 says, By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge the deeps were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. Oh, to understand our God. So part of our approach and our pursuit is humility. We talked about this when we talked about it uh, in James. He says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, right? This is the attitude of Job. And if you look into, into Job chapter 42, there's a great encounter between, with Job who's going through a horrible thing in his life. He's losing his children, his property. His wife says, why don't you just curse God and leave him? He doesn't. And his friends give him all this advice. And, and Job thinks he's doing all right in his life. But at the end, God speaks to Job. And then after that, Job reacts I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, O oh God, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And Job repented. In that repentance, he was gaining and stepping into God's wisdom. Isn't it good that we can pursue God in this day and age we live in in many different ways, right? I'm grateful that I can have a, a phone that I can plug in and I can listen to podcasts or I can go on a run and listen to my downloaded music or a speaker or I can drive in my car 
and I can listen on the radio to, to people engaging God's word. Pursuing wisdom in a lot of ways. There's a lot of good options out there for you to pursue God. Explore it. Check it out. God can speak to you in a, in a variety of ways. One of them being Sunday school. Come and participate. I thought this week of why we don't come to Sunday school. Um, some of us don't, and that's a choice that you have to make. And, and uh, there's a survey there for you to say, maybe this is why I don't come. I would come if we would maybe talk about these things or I need help here. You know, give us some input and feedback. Uh, we we want to be a dynamic ministry, meeting the needs of our people. And maybe people are thinking, well, I, 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 I don't want to know anymore. I don't want to sit. I don't want to uh, let it impinge on my schedule, my time. I don't know. Or maybe people are thinking, I won't learn anything there. Or I've got it all figured out. If you have it all figured out, come and be a part or be a teacher, right? Uh, but consider it anyway, that this time that we gather together might be an avenue for you to pursue God in a new and exciting way and meet new people who are going the same way you are. It's what we're trying to do with our children's uh, curriculum. The curriculum is teaching God's big story, helping students understand the cohesiveness of scriptures, how it's connected, and, and they're seeing the big picture and how it points to Jesus, even from the Old Testament. Pursue. I'm not telling you this to put a burden on you. I'm telling you this because I think this is an invitation for us to grow in faith, pursuing God. And you're thinking, I'm too tired. I am too tired. I just can't add anything else to my day. Well, there's, a, there's a sense of priority, even in my life, where I need to do this. We have to prioritize our pursuit of God so that we can successfully walk and follow Jesus. I don't want you to work harder. I want you to work differently. I know you've got jobs to do, and, and you work hard hours, and you're out there doing that. But our primary calling is to know God and to follow Him. So I'm inviting you to consider your pursuit after God. Let's talk a little bit about the wisdom that's mentioned in this chapter. The wisdom that's there. The introduction of Proverbs in, in chapter 1, 1 to 6, indicates that these statements are written for the attainment of wisdom. He puts down statements for his children and, and, and son to know wisdom. Wisdom is... Uh, stated, rather simply, as the ability to see things in life from God's perspective and making choices in your life which reflect this. That's wisdom. Recognizing God in life, because God is the orchestrator of all life, and then making decisions which reflect that. We sometimes use the word wise for someone who just knows a lot of stuff, right? This is a wise person. You should listen to them. But we should preface wisdom you say, is this biblical wisdom? If it's biblical wisdom, then it recognizes God. And he's able to make decisions which reflect the character of God in those decisions. Another definition of wisdom, which is really combines it with how we worship, uh, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Wisdom enables and encourages us to act life in life-enhancing ways that are fully in accord with the teachings of Jesus. Right? I want to live out a life of wisdom. And make choices that are life-enhancing, not detrimental to myself or to anyone else in my family. And encouraging others to do that. Life-enhancing, following the teachings of Jesus. Sometimes to understand what wisdom is, you look at the, the opposite of that. And Paul does that in Romans uh, chapter 1. He says, this is describing the people of the world in Romans chapter 1. 21 and 22, he says, for, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of God, the glory of the immortal God, for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. And Paul was discouraged by that of that thing that was happening in the church, exchanging the glory of the immortal God for temporary things. And we can get caught in that, in those pursuits. But here's the good news. In verse 6 of chapter 2, 
For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Lord. I read that, and I said, oh, there's hope. There's, there's, there's hope for us that we can actually attain with the wisdom of this. We can pursue God and his thoughts as we navigate this life and represent him to the world. You know, so when we go and we climb the mountain and we play in those great, awesome rock structures that are up there on the top of the mountain, we say, oh, man, God has a great creation. Thank you, God, that I can enjoy this and find pleasure in the things that you made. That's a wise reaction to that climb on that mountain. Or we can, as we play or relax on the shore of a vast ocean. How many of you have been to the shore of an ocean? The Atlantic or Pacific or other. Most of us have. You stand there and you look at all this water and the waves that come after one another. And the power of the waves, if you venture out into those waters, you can't help but think the biblical wisdom would be God is a powerful creator. How big is he that he could do this? And how small am I? When winds that reach over 100 miles per hour come bearing down on the city or town which you live, wisdom teaches us to call out for protection and seek cover and to humbly look to God for protection and to look to God confessing that he's in control. God's wisdom. God's wisdom can invade all of your lives all of our lives, and the aspects that's in it. God speaks to these things. When life happens to you or me, do we have wisdom to see things from God's point of view and to seek life-enhancing decisions? That's why we read the Bible. We look at stories of men and women and children throughout history that have attempted this, to follow God and to see how it plays out and happens. What can we learn? How does it apply to our lives? And we look at men and women who didn't care and they just chafed after whatever they wanted to. And we looked at what happened to them. Our own testimonies shared in the context of community can also teach about wisdom. Whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, I can speak into that and to help you through that. And to guide you. With Joanne's situation, we're, we're praying. We're praying for Joanne to heal. For those that are facing life-threatening, life-ending things in their life, whether it's cancer or it's a flood, when we look into the promises of God, we can still have peace in that moment because the wisdom of God says that life doesn't end here. And death's not the end for those who believe. And it changes the way we can encounter life and go about it when we pursue Him. Sometimes life brings us trials and struggles for our faith to go to the next level because we pursue at a different level. What if we learn to pursue ahead of the trial? And it become our nature to say, I want to go after that because I believe there's good things there. Proverbs 2 says this, if we pursue, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. One of our goals at Coventry is to encourage godly living from everyone that's here and attending so that God's wisdom is on display and we can live fruitful lives, peaceful lives, contented lives. I praise God for your testimony when that's happening in your life, even if there is a struggle or a trial going on. When this happens, God's glory is on display all around for the world to see. It's exciting to be a part of that with you all. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your people, your church who is here, who is gathered to hear these, uh, this proverb, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, forgive us for not treating your thoughts and our relationship with you as if it were silver and gold. But I was reminded this week that you are a good, loving, and gracious Father. That even when we as children kind of disregard you or don't think about you, your love for us doesn't change. Your love for us is deep 
and wide and high and long and far and wide, and it cannot be exhausted. And yet you simply call, come, come to me, my child. Let me teach you more. Let me help you find peace in this storm. Let me give you answers that will help you and your family. And Lord, for that, we thank you and we praise you. For you are an awesome God. Thank you for being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Sam. Proverbs chapter 3 contains a promise. I'm sticking with the theme today. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats bursting with wine. God's promise is the more we give, the more we'll receive from Him. As the ushers wait upon us for our tithes and offerings, Linda will be providing us our special music. Thank you, Linda. Let's all rise and sing the doxology to praise God for these offerings.
bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dearest Lord and Heavenly Father, we take this time to honor you with the presentation of these tithes and offerings to further the work of your church here at Coventry. Please accept these offerings and bless the givers. Let them both be used for your glory, dear Lord, and our neighbor's good, wherever those neighbors may be in this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our final hymn, hymn number 442, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Calling all faithful followers, go, clasp the hand of the one who leads you today and tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>